Oh, I think we're live. Hello, good afternoon. This is Graham Mann from H2O Building Services, podcast with Graham Mann um, from my new studio with the uh, Peter Oxley art at the back. Uh, if you'd like to have a quick look at that. Uh, purchased from Leeds a few months ago. I thought it'd make a more appropriate background than, uh, than my dining room. Anyway, um, introduction. Uh, we have on today uh, Tim Guest, the founder uh, and director, uh, co-founder and director of SwitchwaterSupply.com, and we shall be uh, introducing you to the platform uh, which goes live for water retailers uh, with the um, with the water contracts on Monday, and the first contract will be issued to and advised to water retailers um, on Monday, and um, it kicks off um, a year and a half of. Uh, blood, sweat and tears and um, argumentative debates, um, but we've finally got there and, and, and I'm really chuffed that we have. Um, where's H2O since we've been in this uh, lockdown? Well, um, for the first week, 10 days, we were adjusting to it all. Uh, but uh, I, I can have to tell you it, is that the, we've had a 50% increase, a marked increase in uh, businesses coming to us for uh, help and advice on their water and wastewater bills. I've got a couple of, um, sort of categories here. We've had uh, water leaks uh, in Newcastle uh, and, and in the north. Uh, one guy had a, a £5,000 water bill and there's only two of them in the office. Um, so we sorted that out today and they've got a leak and he also um, his meter actually feeds the rest of the industrial park. So he's well chuffed, we found out, but not chuffed with his bills. Um, so we've got high consumption sites. Um, we've got um, one of the guys, uh, Nicky's in, in the office as we're working from home. Uh, closing, um, I think the last count was a thousand client sites, so we vacated them. So, incidentally, if you've actually vacated your sites or site, you need to inform the water retailer, and there's an appropriate way of doing that. Um, if any of you have uh, left your properties and you vacated, there is a procedure. So, if you need help and advice on that, or you wish us to do that on your behalf, please do let us know. Um, we, we've got a lot going on here um, with that, and, and ironically, we just closed a thousand sites. Um, for one client, uh, no, 800 uh, last week, and now we're opening them all up again. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, a um, bit of a bit of an air of um, uh, frustration in the office, but there you go. That that, that comes to the territory. Um, like I say, we, we're also looking at uh, back charges as well. There's a lot of companies coming to us and asking us to do water audits for them and bill validation, which is really good. Um, and we just had some claims through for seven clients. The total amount of refunds is £130,000, with savings going forward of about £45,000. Companies, these. Um, but we've got lots more that we're submitting. Uh, we've just done another one for a client in Manchester with a potential refund of 10000 So that will be welcome uh, revenue for his business. Uh, and it will also be um, shutting down his old accountant and um, adding the new lower charges in due course and approval. Um, what else have we got? So um, I, I'd like to bring in uh, Josh at this moment in time because um, Josh and I have been working together now for about a year to get your media. Um, he was the guy that set up his business and, uh, um, and through various contacts on LinkedIn got us um, involved in podcasts, which have been absolutely fantastically successful. We've had a lot of traction from uh, the water retail sector, uh, new companies, um, there's been jokes galore about my shirts, so I thought, well, it's week four now, so we better put on something bright, hence the picture as well. So, And we've got the logo up there. Up there. Thank you very much, Josh, wherever it is, electronically. So that's <laughs> – so, Josh, um, we go. were talking this morning. Uh, Josh is from uh, the director, managing director of Get Your Media. He'll tell you all about what he does briefly. But um, we were discussing today about, um, you know, the, the – the, but business in general seem to like take a complete whoosh dive. And we experienced that in the last two weeks. And now we've seen quite a marked upturn, really. And, and we were discussing that this morning. I, I gather that you've had a lot of successes also. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, we were talking on the phone about your marketing and your sort of media presence on, on LinkedIn and whatnot. And yeah. um, I think it's one of them where we, we spoke about it on a podcast at the beginning of all this. And immediately the sort of knee-jerk reaction is to sort of ditch all marketing for any business because it's one of them expenditures that people want to cut you know as soon as possible really um that's you know like the perceived thing is like let's cut marketing save us costs yeah. <laughs> but after um you know after being in this lockdown for what four or five weeks now 
I I made an active sort of push on on LinkedIn and across all platforms with my marketing and media because obviously that's what we do. So I kind of just wanted to lead by example. And um, with doing that, we've had this last seven or eight days, we've had like an absolute influx of inquiries and we've signed two new clients on long-term contracts for, for, you know, all sorts of media from, you know, video production and, you know, Mm. stuff like that. And I think now, I think from a sales standpoint, it's made it really obvious to businesses that have not invested in the digital assets that they actually need them because the traditional sales route of, you know, going to clients, having meetings, being able to sort of showcase a product or or service, they can't do that anymore because we're in lockdown and we're going to be in this for a little while longer. Whereas if that initial investment of sort of digital products like videos, podcasts, whatever it was, they could be reusing and and, and obviously capitalizing on it now when yeah. you know, the traditional sales route couldn't be taken. And like I, for me, I, I feel lucky that obviously that's what we do as a business. I think the actual industry is going to thrive off the back of this. Yeah. Um, and I think those businesses that don't get on board now with creating their own content, like not just it doesn't have to be through a professional company, but just create your own content and start yeah. reaching out and getting yourself seen. Yeah. I think you know the the numbers were like it's up seventy percent is screen time across most platforms. YouTube itself has had to reduce the resolution, the standard resolution, um, yeah, I know that. because of the influx of people on it. Same for Netflix. Mm. So you need to be creating content and putting it online in front of your clients, your audience, to help drive traffic for your business. It's just, I yeah. mean, it goes without saying, but you need to be like acting very fast because more people are going to cotton on, and you want to be at the beginning of that wave. You don't want to be at the end of it. Well, we've been doing it now for, is it a year? Yeah, so you, you had, um, you know, obviously various contacts, but with Tim, obviously Tim from Switch Wars, yeah. like Tim that got us in contact well over a year ago. Um, I was a bit dubious because I, I remember I was looking at my, like, my first podcast and, uh, yeah, I was a really bit nervous. I mean, we're improving all the time because we've got, you know, basically it's just be yourself and talk about your business, but also listen to people. So you, yeah you know and, and, and listen to, to to the market and to your customers and listen to on linkedin this is a fantastic picture i mean i've, I've seen other i call them attempts recently um yeah. from various businesses on on, uh, on linkedin and, and the production has been yuck but you 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 you've, you've pulled the card out of a hat on this one absolutely what what's the so, so, so you're you're now expanding and doing a lot more um what, video, live content video content what what's what sort of yeah, I mean, so for most of our clients that have approached us recently, obviously since since we went into lockdown, we couldn't go out and film, you know, at the moment. Um, but a lot of people were, had, were sitting on content. So they, they were sitting on stuff that they'd filmed on the mobiles, they wanted to start creating new stuff. So they've sent that across to us and we've been editing it for them. So obviously mm-hmm. it's not, a, the standard's not as high as it would be if you were using, you know, professional camera equipment, but we can still piece together some really high quality stuff. So we've done that for clients. And then we've looked at the sectors that have approached us, you know, like industrial sectors and, we we can still go and fill with them whilst obeying the rules of social distancing. So a, a lot of the work that we're doing now is editing for clients that are creating the, vi- the video content at home. Mm. And, and obviously, because the editing skill is the hardest part. And then um, physically going to clients now. So we're looking at booking in in May, following all the social distancing guidance, but we've still got to work. So we can mm. fill in industrial sort of areas, you know, open sites, plenty of, plenty of uh, um, fresh air and I feel comfortable that we can we can do that whilst obeying the rules so it's exciting yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. we've got to adapt well, them, to well we, we did uh, I think it was our first pod- podcast after the so-called lockdown and um, I, I, I was I said to you we, it was you and I do sort of interviewing each other or having a bit of a chat and I said to, I was asking twice at the beginning at the end of the podcast that you know we wanted more water retailers the water industry to start engaging with us because yeah. that's that's what we need it, it, it's it's you know, it's a three and a half billion pound water retail market. This and there's it, it, not enough, you know, interaction between wholesalers, retailers, market operators, stakeholders, and customers. This is the whole reason why we're doing this. And um, I got a call from uh, John Reynolds, the chief executive of, of Castle Water. Uh, we've got to get on the platform incidentally because my phone went at nine o'clock at night. My phone went at nine o'clock at night, and I picked the phone up. And I saw where, where it was coming from, and it, it's John Reynolds. He said, "I love your podcast. Like the idea that you're asking, inviting water retail companies to come on. Uh, let, let's do it." So, uh, John, if, you, if you're listening on this podcast, um, we should have done it last Monday. 
been probably really, really busy. I know he's, he's got a lot of uh, meetings going on there. It's you know, a 500 million pound company. I expect you're going to be running all over the place right now. But uh, when you've got a minute, John, pick up the phone or send us an email, give us a time and date, and, and, and we're ready to, uh, yeah. ready to uh, do a podcast with you. Um, so, so you're all busy, busy. That's fantastic because I did get a bit worried about you because <laughs> we took a dive as well. Everyone, it, it was two yeah, weeks. Yeah. Of, it were two weeks of depression now, and um, so I thought I'd put a nice clean shirt on and have a shave, and and but my hair's not. I need to get. I sent off for one of those um, hair trimmers. So, oh um, dear, is Nikki I'm holding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know Nikki's Nikki's laughing in the background in the office, going he he he, you know, type of thing. So that's fantastic. Well, that's the message. Sort of give Josh a ring, get your media, um, get on there, have a chat with him, see see, um, use his expertise, his knowledge, tap into it. He's a good guy, a fun guy, and he does some really really good work. If he didn't, we wouldn't use him. <laughs> and uh, and uh, get Leanne back as soon as you can. Leanne, if you're watching, you know, get back into the. Uh, Get back in there. I think you furloughed her, kicked her out, or something. Yeah, yeah. We've had. I mean, obviously, it's one of them. She's got a little boy as well, so that, yeah. you know, I can't go to nursery. You know, we can't go to the office. It's a bit of a tough one, so you know, yeah. furlough the only option. Um, yeah. But yeah, thanks for this, Graham. And, and what we'll do, I'll oh, get, I'll get to next to you, mate. I'll uh, get that. Right, fantastic. On. Well, we got um, Tim Guest now, director and co-founder of SwitchWaterSupply.com. Um, so when the business is changing, changing. Uh, hello, Tim, are you all right? Good afternoon. How are you? <laughs> well, we've got the logo up there, the top, uh, my top right-hand screen. Great, everything's hunky-dory. Um, right, Tim. So you and I have been working on this platform now for uh, over a year, blood, sweat, and tears, and um, everything else like that. We took a bit of a dive just before, uh, well, just during this coronavirus situation, which uh, I won't repeat the word again. Uh, and uh, now we're in, we've been uploading all the client data. There's lots of exciting contracts for water retailers to pitch on. And you guys have been uh, carrying out trials for the last couple of weeks. So if you could just give, the, give us all a, 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 a lowdown of what's going on and, and, and what the plans are in the immediate future. Yeah, so we've not been, we've not been um, lazy or resting um, since we last spoke. We've continued to put client data on there. Uh, the premise of switchwatersupplier.com who doesn't already know is not just about a digital platform. So there's an awful lot of consultation going on in the background with customers and potential customers. So that's part of the handholding service. So um, we have been putting the data on the platform, checking it, and then effectively just looking at customer situations and scenarios as to when to... Um, when to release the first of, of a batch of, of opportunities out there to the water retailers. And as you as you said at the beginning of the piece, we, we've um, been gonna go out this afternoon to every water retailer contact that we have on the platform. These are contacts that, that we've um, uh, taken into the platform through, through your work, uh, mm. regular contact emails. So there's, a, there's a, an email going out this afternoon, which is effectively a precursor to an invitation that's going to go out on Monday. So Monday the 4th will be the first invitation to a tender and quotation opportunity for, um, well, it's actually for a, a national company with 35 uh, water meters, I think, are, are in this particular request. Yeah. And so it's a great opportunity for retailers to um, finally find out what, what it's all about. I mean, obviously, nobody's had a great deal of opportunity to see it as we initially planned with the launch event yeah. and things of that nature but yeah. with uh with access on monday available to retailers to the retailer portal there'll be some guidance notes obviously available on how the system works it's really simple from from a retailer point of view um and that was always <laughs> part of our objective if, fingers crossed that's the way it's viewed obviously everything yeah. that's new has a has a learning curve but but the reality is we're not trying to overcomplicate it we're not developing a piece of software that's intended to do a million things we're trying to streamline one mm. particular process and the water retailers involvement is one part of that that bigger process um so obviously we're on hand to to help anybody whether it's customer side retailer side partner side we're on hand so if if uh, come monday and next week 
retailers have issues they want help with the profiles they 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 want a, a more personal one to one in terms of how to use the platform we're available we can set something up with the wonders of technology and uh, get the ball rolling but the the point is we've been live for several weeks obviously live in the context of customers but now we've reached that point where you know data's in data's ready to go we're going to drip feed these opportunities into the market because we want to allow a little bit of a period of time in between them so that those retailers who perhaps aren't watching this and aren't aware of, of some of the news that we put out that word gets around uh, i mean i think you're going to do your best as well just to reach out and make sure that one or two chief execs are, are aware that within the organization they're going to be receiving emails today and on monday mm. um so we just need to to sort of ramp things up so that the customers concerned obviously get get a good a good chance of of multiple retailers participating but yeah we're there good to go i think the i think the viewers perhaps just need reminding those who haven't perhaps um heard too much about switchboards supply.com it's 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 the it's the uk's first water retail procure platform for procuring water retail contracts and uh, i was just saying to you this morning again i mean we are actually making water industry history this is you know a first the biggest probably most significant innovation in the water industry there has been since april 17 April 2017, when the water market deregulated, and this has yeah, been so on the, the back. Customer focus, yeah, absolutely, P customer focus. But we're bringing the customers to the water retail market, and I really would like to see a bit more engagement. We've had we had some solid engagement for seven and eight, seven or eight um, water retail businesses. But um, if any of you guys are listening, the first contract that's be coming out over a three-year term is going to be 1.2 million pounds. Um, I've got others. There's, a, there's, there's uh, contracts ranging from 5,000, 20,000, 100,000 up to, I think, 1.6 million. So 1.6 million, which is about 5 million over three years. These are significant contracts, but we're dealing with the whole market now. And um, so, you know, it's a really, really exciting time. I think we both recognize it's innovative. Uh, it's not ahead of its time because it's going it, to, the emphasis is not only on bringing the customer and the retail together, it's, it's about Correct, correcting the data because there's tens of thousands of customers that have got incorrect bills and so the water retailers although they're billing in, in accordance with the market data they're wrong so tens of thousands of customers are being overcharged and some of the some of the um, some of the overcharges have been very very significant and, and they're popping up almost on a, on a weekly basis now but um of course it, it's very very simple to operate and you've not you've come into this from a, a tech, technological point of view we've come onto it from a water industry point of view and we've just put our our knowledge and expertise together um and, and we've come up with this so it's a really exciting time for us uh, and uh, so uh, so monday's the day then yeah yeah there's i mean there's still a huge mountain to climb like you say in terms of um we never intended to be disruptive in a in a in a manner which was disrespectful to the industry but but naturally it is an innovative product service offering um so it is disruptive and and with any kind of innovation it takes time for uh, the, the, the the sort of the the recipients the the audience to to understand what it is how it works what the changes are how it benefits the industry and and, and it will take time for momentum to 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 gain but um you know and i now know that that customers um typically have a lot of issues managing their water mm. understanding water uh and um the methods just aren't out there to do what we're doing so so hopefully we're going to bring a lot of value and benefit to um to everybody that uses the platform whether it's mm. through through us directly or, or through one of our partner organizations that that, that will be using the platform for their customers it, it's going to bring a transparency um, to to seeking quotations and responses to tenders that, that hasn't been there in the past. We've got loads of features in the platform, though, that are designed to, um, again, without overcomplicating things, they're designed to allow customers to get what they need from an opportunity to reach out to the market, to specify, you know, um, a questionnaire, if you like, that, 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 the participants from the water retail market need to 
respond to and, and give the customer that confidence that they're getting the answers they want. Mm. Um, and that's important, of course, because they're not reviewing based on price. This isn't an eBay auction for water. This is about mm. having a conversation, really, through a digital yeah. platform with, cus- mm. uh, with, with retailers. So we've got the tools in there to allow that to, to happen for customers' benefit, but equally so, we, we, we're mindful of what water retailers want for their effort and their input. So we've, you know, in the conversations we've had to date, and we'd like a lot more conversations with retailers um, to hear their their opinions. But we're we're developing tools. We've got tools in there that allow retailers to get what they need, which is visibility. Really, it's visibility of the right things, um, privacy from other things, but but an, an ability to audit and, and and account for their activity and see what they're getting out of it and where they've spent time on a on a tender response for a customer, we obviously want to give, um, we want to give the retailer something in return for that. And so we have, we, we, we give them visibility of what the customer has uh, weighted their, their, their responses as and how they fared relative to the, to their peers, not in the context of each against each other, but as a, as a whole, and obviously against the, um, the, the successful, retailer well, it's helping them it's actually helping them and guiding them into improving their business isn't it i mean we you know as i said in the beginning of this podcast you know 3.5 billion pound water retail market and that excludes all the added value services if you added everything to it wastewater treatment you know maintenance everything it, it's 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 pretty it's a pretty significant number in terms of the value of the water and waste water industry you know you've got to collect the waste you've got to treat the waste um you know it's, it's a huge market and this gives these companies an inroad and, 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 a, and a door and an opportunity, a window into the marketplace for these guys to get together and do business. And that's 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 what it's all about. And uh, you know, it's kind of we, we've 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 actually you've actually designed it around what what customers and retailers uh, where where there are shortfalls in the market and in an attempt to start making the market work in a more equitable fashion for both customer and retailer. Yeah, because if 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 you re, if you review it in respect of other industries, completely different industries, and I'm not talking about energy as such, but if you look at the way we we now shop for cars, Auto Trader been 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 the platform that's been for many years. If you if you ignore Auto Trader and look at some of the innovations within an already innovative uh, industry, there you've you've got platforms like Car Wow. Well, that that turned the whole premise of going around dealerships looking for the car you knew you wanted uh, but going around multiple dealerships that that turned that premise on its head uh, several years ago it just takes time for for innovative ideas to be understood and for themselves to be managed and massaged into the format they actually need to ultimately reach you know switchwatersupplier.com as it goes out now as it as it's running now it is one thing who knows in a, in a year's time with some further feedback, with some review on our part, we may evolve certain parts of it in the way it works. But fundamentally, we're trying to bring customers to retailers and make the whole process of negotiation and, uh, and, and, and shopping around for contracts and best suited suppliers as easy as possible. Mm-hmm. I think it's a, there, there, there are a number of issues and challenges for the water retailers we, in the marketplace generally. But um, we, you know, we want to work more closely with these guys because we can do a, a you know a tremendous amount with, with our expertise because we're essentially at the coal face, listening to talking to customers. I don't know. I had a call from a, a chap yesterday. They've got um, forty odd locations in in inner London. Spend probably about half a million pounds. It's a charity, but it's a, it's a leisure charity, and they've just received a back charge for ten thousand um, pounds. Ultimately, so we, we ran that through the system. And and basically, the, the the water retailer is not supposed to be charging uh, back to back so far. So there are limits on how far they can back charge in the new market, and that's reduced his bill by five grand. <laughs> and so he said, um, "What else can we do with our business?" You know. And so they're sending out. They've sent a, a list of the portfolio, uh, and they're sending over the bills. And 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 I said we can probably reduce these by about 30 35%. And then once we've looked at the efficiency and overcharging, got the bills in some sort of order, then we can go out to market and, and then retailers can uh, can pitch for that business. So we've got some really, really good businesses. We've got leisure. So you see, 
so you see in in the context of what you're saying there then the the the, the market was deregulated to, to bring about opportunities for customers to rec- recognize and 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 uh, benefit from water efficiency measures wasn't it not yes. it's not just about switching switching is one part of it that benefits yeah. them i guess financially mm-hmm. speaking and also in terms of potential customer service levels and, and suitability of any given supplier but but water efficiency requires consultancy and that that's really the part of the business that i think we both find interesting is that mm. the switching platform the procurement platform is one part of switch water supplier but it's the consultative personalized nature of it behind the scenes that that brings the most value to both the customer and also to to the retailer because it's done with independence and impartiality we're not mm. uh, we're not supplying um water services as in supply of uh, ourselves uh, so we can be independent and impartial but 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 customers need expertise don't they in an industry which seems to me to be um still devoid of of quite a lot of understanding on certainly on the customer's side it's it's mm. it's a strange thing water we all know it so well but we know nothing about it really as <laughs> as business consumers of it mm. I think um, there's lack of confidence in the market as well, but I, I, I haven't fully read off what's um, uh, report or the state of the market. Um, it's, it's 67 pages and I really haven't got I do. time at the moment to read it, but I just, I just extrapolated a few figures uh, and 38% of, of the customers that switched over the last year or two have switched through energy brokers. Now, our poll tells, our information tells us that when they go out, because there's no there's no platform until now, when they go out to get pricing and get a deal for their clients, which is, is quite significant in the size of business, um, 38% went out and and by their own admission said, oh, we only go out to about two or three, two or three businesses, two or three retailers. So so and and I've 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 looked and I've asked questions about who these retailers are, and a large proportion of the time they seem to be the same ones. So the rest of the market isn't getting an opportunity, an insight into that, which is, which is, um, you know, of, of concern to us because we want to see the whole market benefit. Everyone needs uh, to have a, uh, um, you know, a crack at the whole market. So this will go out if, if every, you know, if you send it out to all the retailers, only seven participate or only three participate. That's great. That's fantastic. But we've got a true representation of the whole market. So we've been talking to brokers and they're saying, well, we only go to two or three or maybe even sometimes one one water retailer because there's nowhere else to go. And then you direct them to that and go, oh, what's this? And you da 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 Ah, right, fine. So that's quite simple. So how do we do that? Well, we give you a login. You can do this, that, and the other. Um, you, you can set yourself an account up or you can come to us for the first couple of months. We'll give you some training and, and then away you go and, and you can upload it and do it all yourself. So um, it is it is new. It is innovative. It is very, very simple and straightforward. But all the signs are at the moment um, that, that, that um, you know, it's a very, very exciting uh, time. So so you mentioned about um, additional added value services and the client can submit certain things in, in conjunction with their with their data. Would that be when you mentioned weighting and, and point scoring? Can you tell us a bit about a bit about that? Yeah, well, it goes back to the idea that um, when we did some research with retailers, and and some retailers were kind enough to to give us that, their opinions outright, and it became clear that uh, you know nobody wants to enter a feeding frenzy for for business. Nobody wants to force the, the, the contract price down to such a point that yes, the customer wins, but but then potentially the retailers and the market as a, as a whole loses. And um, because obviously if, if, if the price is being offered are unsustainable and can't be managed, you you're potentially going to find yourself in a situation where over time quality of service dips. For, for all clients, you know, if, if retailers have been pushed to a point where they're not making money on, on the on the books that they've got. So um so we got we got the kind of feedback that 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 the idea of an auction was certainly something that they didn't want to entertain the retailers we spoke to. So so it has to be about more than price. And you know we we know that a lot of customers are always going to be looking at price. The, 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 the main stimulus for some businesses who perhaps fall into the category of where we work with clients that have multiple spids, multiple meters, multiple locations, or perhaps 
few locations but a significant spend on water mm. um we know that one of their driving factors is going to be looking at cost reduction from a pure supply point of view um but we also know that given the challenges that the, the market has now and um how some retailers are struggling comparative to others to provide a level of customer service which is um deemed acceptable by whatever measurements and standards and whoever's whoever's making the, the claims we know that there's a lot of pressure to improve customer service so we also know from your customers uh, that, that we've spoken to that that customer service the the idea of receiving better customer service potentially through a switch to another supplier is something that's on the minds of a lot of people so it's about it's about more than price and so in in recognition of the fact that some customers will even with multiple sites come to us and they'll want to reach out to the market for for responses and they'll be looking at price we know that there are those that would normally consider a formal tender process they wouldn't they would want suppliers to tender for the business and by doing so they'll want to set criteria they'll want to ask questions in the format of some some sort of tender uh, framework or questionnaire so we built that into the platform from day one so that um you know from a customer perspective switch was supplier uh, from a switching side of, of the business will always be a free service um and the tools that they have access to they're, they're free of charge to help them manage their water interest their portfolio of properties over a period of time but within those free tools they've got the ability then to set criteria and ask a series of questions to retailers which which they um they align with a a value uh, so for any given question they can say this question is out of 10 as far as i'm concerned i'm going to mark it out of 10 or yeah. it's a yes no or it's a true false so they can create a series of questions that accompany the, re the request for a tender response and, and a quotation from retailers and in order to participate on one of those types of uh, opportunities the retailers who do want to participate they do have to respond to all the questions mm. and criteria being set and asked by the, the customer and then at the end of the process though it's very important again with respect to what what retailers need out of this we know that you know in the perfect sol solution to this every retailer in the marketplace would engage with every every tender opportunity we know that's not going to happen but in the case where perhaps the majority of the market feels that this particular customer opportunity looks really good. It's a key client They would, they are, they all need to have a go for it where we might have quite a bit more competition on any given opportunity. Um, and if it's multiple sites, of course, there's a, there's a good degree of effort on the retailers part there in terms of preparing their quotations, you know, looking at the market data, uh, potentially preparing more than one quotation. They might want to prepare more than one, draft of a quotation so that during the tender window they can be competitive if, if they find that their initial quote wasn't necessarily as as, as um uh, as cost effective shall we say as as some of their peers so th there's potentially going to be a lot of time that retailers spend preparing certain responses for certain opportunities and the time is warranted no doubt if, if the opportunity presents itself as, as being something of interest but um in 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 reply or or in regards to to having put that time into answering a customer's questions we do want to provide feedback to retailers so we do that so so the customer is obliged to 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 wait rank score uh, every every question from every retailer that they've posed if that's the route they chose to go down mm -hmm. and and by doing that we can then feed back to retailers how they fared you know what the customer actually uh, gave them in in those particular questions and that's where you sort, and, you sort of data for them then i say um um yeah. just uh, uh, adding to that really um the, you know the, the water retailers need to know that they can pitch for other business it's not for us to do that business we offer you know through switch water supplier on the tendering platform uh, other services if they want them water audits leak detection all that but the water retailers have an open 
opportunity to pitch for that business first. We don't, there's no influence there. If they fail to do that, I mean, the, the regulator off for market operator most or all, all the stakeholders, DEFRA, all want the water retailers to offer added value services, water efficiency. And I do know, actually, more, more recently, you and I saw a report where, where the target for water efficiency and other services has been sorely missed by the water retail market. So they haven't met with either A, the expectations, or, or B, the, the targets which the government set down for water efficiency and, and other services within the market. So there is also a strong environmental message with this. And I was talking to a couple of colleagues uh, in the in the uh, utility market recently, and the carbon reduction is, is, is really quite impressive. So we've got carbon reduction, we've got a strong environmental and sustainability message here in the sense that we want to start in the future publishing on the on on the website the amount of carbon we save for clients on the water and the wastewater uh, discharge because each individual wholesaler that supplies a retailer have got different carbon numbers attached to the water they supply and the waste that they collect and we've got all that data so we can now calculate with a high degree of accuracy what the carbon savings are, are, are on each individual a project that, that that we're involved with or indeed um the water retailers are involved with uh, and i was speaking to a client on um on on a conference last week and in closing i said oh were you aware that you know we can we can calculate the carbon savings across your portfolio and it fits exactly in with your company's environmental strategy and, and message she said oh i didn't realize that and, and and that was again a positive and i just threw that one in just to see the reaction so it's not it's got so many so many different um facets to it which which uh, which i find quite quite um quite fascinating so you're yeah. going to be sending out the um the messages to the water retailers this afternoon sometime yeah there's an initial an, an initial email going out this afternoon which right. is basically just a precursor just forewarning retailers that the doors are opening now at their side as they have been to the customers and uh, to expect the first invitation on monday um so yeah it's just it's just to put our name in front of them in the inbox today ahead of monday really um but as i said we, we happily with the technology we've got available and resources working from home we'll happily take calls from from anybody that needs a little bit of hand holding and guidance or uh, just wants to discuss it face to face on the back of something like this well, it's so, about yeah. running out of time because I know we've got lots to do this afternoon. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, Tim, for taking the time to no uh, give us an insight into into the platform. And we look forward to uh, to Monday <laughs> uh, with um, with anticipation and excitement. That's my words, not yours. <laughs> well, it's the start. It's the start of the process, anyway. Is yeah. it Monday? Monday is the invitation. So there's there's yeah. a period of time before anything goes live in terms of a tender window uh, but it's the point at which um, retailers get the opportunity to participate in something that's fantastic well thank you very much tim um uh, josh are you still there still yeah still it um have you got any final notes on your marketing because i know you were quite keen to get it i mean basically you know it's get active that's it just um get yourself soon keep doing what you're doing and uh, i I think your feed, uh, your video today will have stood out quite well on people's feed with the uh, colour and that painting in the background. Oh, did it? Not about attention grabbing. I'm really impressed with that painting. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get yourself on, mate? That's all black and white there, look. <laughs> and Tim needs one. Eh? He needs to hang something down from his ceiling, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate it. So all stay safe, stay well, and uh, perhaps we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Okay. Cheers, guys. Bye.